Thanks for tuning in to A Better World, where we aim to illustrate that today is the greatest time to be alive and show the progress we're making as a civilization. I'm your host, Luis Acevedo. And in today's episode, we're going to be going over an article that I read from Brookings Institute. And it is titled, A Global Tipping Point, Half the World is Now Middle Class or Wealthier. Now, if you're like me, the first question I asked is, what exactly do they mean by middle class? And so... Uh, to explain and you know to elaborate what that is is basically if you have a little bit of extra spending money you can buy a vehicle you can afford to buy a refrigerator you can afford to buy a uh, washing machine you're going out to eat going to movies can take a vacation uh, and you feel confident that if an economic shock comes your way you'll be able to survive and not be vulnerable to fall into poverty or go right into poverty if something bad happens with the economy. And lastly, if you're spending 11 to $110 per day per person, that is what they also qualify as middle class. So about 3.8 billion people, half of the population, is considered to be middle class now, which is astonishing if you look at it from the standpoint of 10,000 years ago when, the fir you know, when we first uh, became an agricultural-based civilization, majority of the people were in poverty. This is the first time in history since then that majority of the people are now uh, in middle class. So that's awesome. However, it is important to note that half of the population, about half, is still in poverty or vulnerable of falling into extreme poverty. So there's like 3.5 billion people, something like that, that are vulnerable to fall back into poverty and there's a few million people who are in poverty right now. However, this is declining, obviously, with the growth in the middle class. They actually project by 2020 that the middle class population will grow to 4 billion people. And by 2030, they believe that it will grow to 5.3 billion people. So this is awesome news. Um, it, it, not just so much for, um, I guess... Humanity when it comes to just um, a person aspect of it, you know, just the livelihood, but also the economy as well. So if you look at the economies, uh, it's also beneficial to them too because now more people are being able to afford everyday consumptions because two-thirds of household consumptions come from the middle class. Now, mind you, the rich and the wealthy spend more per person, but there's less of them, so they don't have as big of an impact when it comes to regular everyday consumptions as the middle class does. So that's huge for the global economy. And also, it is um, beneficial to the middle class and to the uh, people of a country as well who have a growing middle class because typically uh, the middle class is going to be more politically active than you know, uh, uh, a poverty-stricken uh, group of people simply because they have more to lose now. And now I guess you could say that they're not so much dependent on the government, but they're counting on the government to make smart, logical moves, and that way their livelihood isn't affected that much and isn't changing. And, you know, any kind of regulations or barriers that are put up from the government can also affect businesses, which in turn can affect the middle class because those businesses are contributing to society and paying taxes as well and providing a service or uh, a good to the society as a whole, and the middle class is the majority of the people who are going to go out and pay for that service or good. And so if you put a barrier up there to kind of stifle, um, I guess, um, customer flow, then that wouldn't be good for the economy as a whole. So, you know, uh, people are more politically aware once they reach this status, which is a beautiful thing because then, you know, uh, the government becomes governed by the people almost by default, simply because in order to stay in positions of power, they need to appease the people and make sure that they're not overrun by them. And, you know, especially if you have a, a strong middle class, you want to do everything you can to keep that middle class because other countries are going to want to do business with you if you have a large middle class. The same way we do business with China is because they have one of the largest, if not the largest middle class in the world. So, of course, we want to hit their market because most of their people are... Uh, the average consumer. So why wouldn't you want to target that? So and that's why, you know, you would want, uh, not you would want, but the middle class would be more politically active. Now, this is an awesome thing. Obviously, 
the world's becoming a better place because people are having more access to resources um, and are able to make more money so that way they can live a comfortable life. Now, obviously, middle class here may not be the same as middle class in China. And hell, middle class in the United States even varies by state. But more people are entering it right now than ever. I mean, right now, the more people than ever are in the middle class. So that's an awesome thing. And that's just showing that today, without a doubt, is one of is the greatest time to be alive and it's only getting better and with the advancements of technology this is only going to improve so that's the article i wanted to cover for today i hope you all enjoyed it and like always if you like what you heard or saw please subscribe to the apple podcast or uh, subscribe to the youtube channel and be sure to check me out on my igtv channel you can find it at my instagram page at Luis Acevedo underscore 22. That's L-U-I-S-A-C-E-B-E-D-O underscore 22. And if you have any suggestions um, on a topic you would like me to do that you know that it's been progress, let me know. And I will do my research and we'll go from there. All right. You all have a wonderful day. Peace.